everybody, it's Sam Mix Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you another large kind of display style card. So it's evolved from the double display card that I shared for my creative card series and I'll link that one and some others that are similar to that up here. But this is a Z Fold card but doubled. So yeah, it's you'll see anyway what I mean. But basically it's six by nine. I've made an envelope for it and then it opens up like this. And you can see there. I'm using my favourite secret garden collection and I will show you all of that. Look at the little picket fence. Love all the papers. You've got a little bit of sparkle there from the little Diamante which I've used, or the Brad. And then it stands up. Again, the profile's lovely on this. It's just such a nice piece to have on the mantle. And then on the back, you have that there. So you've got plenty of room. You could have that all white if you wanted to. There we go. And you can also decorate, obviously, all those other panels as well. So it's I just, yeah, absolutely love how this comes together. I've used the bunting, I've used so much of the collection and it just works. It just makes decorating so easy and it is an easy card to make. It really is. It is just two Z folds stuck together and then these strips as well. So, yeah, I'll show you the envelope and everything, but uh, let's crack on with the tutorial. Okay, so this is the paper pack that I'm using. So it's the Secret Garden and all of the um, matching accessories as well. So again, I'll show you those as I use them. Lovely, I've made so many tutorials using this collection and I'll probably do a separate playlist for the Secret Garden and I'll link that up here for you as well because yeah, it's just, I love it. Don't want it to end. Okay, so there is lots of mats and layers to this just like the display card. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through the, the main ones first and then as I do the mats I'll tell you the sizes to them and then as I do the layers I'll tell you the sizes to those rather than throwing it all at you and everything will be listed in my blog as normal. So to make the actual main card, so the double Z fold as they say that, you need two pieces that are 12 by 6. Again I'm using that lovely heavyweight cardstock from Lidl, it's just yeah really really nice. So on both pieces you want to score at 3 and then flip it and score it six. Okay, so again, three, and flip it and score it six. And then where you've then scored, flip it back over again, you're gonna fold that one in, the six inch one, and then the three out, creating your Z fold. Okay, so I'm just gonna grab, so it's kinda like the double gate fold as well but rather than it folding like that, it folds in like this. So it has got a slightly yeah, different look, which is why I think double Z fold will work better. So make sure I fold it the right way, there we go. Okay, so you'll have two pieces that look like this, and all you're gonna do is we're gonna flip one around and we're gonna be sticking it over the top like this. But I'll talk about that in a moment. Then you want four pieces that are one inch by 12. And these are just the scraps from when I cut that out. Okay, so try to use as much of the card as possible. Okay, so don't need the scoreboard anymore and I'll go through the mats and layers to those in a minute. So what you wanna do is decide whether you wanna put your right over your left or your left over your right. I'm gonna put the left over the right, it just feels right to do it that way. And I'm just using my grid here. Each of these are one inch. So I'm just sitting this down here and you just want to mark a pencil mark, you don't need to do any scoring or anything like that, at three inches. So just there and just, yeah, just there, okay? And then all I'm going to do is stick this over up to that pencil line, okay? So then you should have three, three and three because imagine there's an imaginary line here. Um, which we'll be doing with our mats and layers. And then when that folds in and that folds in, in fact, when you fold that one down, you want it to come up nice and flush with it. Okay, so use that as another gauge as well. So although I've done my pencil mark, it's just slightly over that. And then you'll get a nice kind of finish like so, because this is that centre panel that you see even when you've closed it. So then when we open it up, that's how it's gonna look. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is add my glue all in that section. You can use double-sided tape if you want to. Okay, and just spend some time making sure that that's all lined up. This glue will dry nice and clear and that's all gonna get covered anyway. But now you will have this six by nine card. 
Okay. Now, I would say before you add these, decorate these panels here. It's a bit easier because if I open this card up here, trying to get your mats and layers in when these are in place, some of you may find harder. So actually you want to do, so if I bring this down, you want to do this one, this one, your middle, this one and this one. Okay, in fact the middle one you can leave, so let's just concentrate on these four because you'll see they're the ones with the full mats and layers. So they're the ones I'm going to talk you through first. Okay, so you're going to want seven pieces that are two and three quarters by five and three quarters. Now one of these pieces will be your back one with your message, so I've already gone and stamped mine. So our stamps so are three are for the back, so I'm going to have my stamped message and then one of these either side, so I'll stick them in a minute and then you have these ones, so you've got five for the front one, two, three, and four. Okay, so we're going to leave that one because that one's going to be easy to decorate. So get those all stuck down, just make sure that you've got a nice even border on all of your sides. When you go to stick this one down, because obviously this one here you have this kind of join, so that gives you your space there, but this one's just a large six by six area. Focus on the left hand side and just make sure you give it the same border that you've given this piece from that score line. So I can see there that all lines up nicely and then I know that when we go to stick our mat in here everything will line up. Okay so I've got my three on the back and then my four on the front there and just Obviously, you know, keep folding everything in each time. You also don't want to see any of that white when I close it. You can see everything's hidden. Okay, next we're going to add these pieces. So I told a lie, you do need to do a bit more scoring. So I'm just going to pop that one there. You're going to score at six and nine. Okay, again, six and nine. And do that on all of them. And also what you should do is flip it and do at six again actually, just to make sure you don't get any cracking. If you're ever doing any kind of like concertina folds or Z folds, flip it or just do what I did then, just go over it again. Okay, so we'll do one at a time. So we start with this side. So our six score line is here, is gonna fold down to form a mountain and then that one there, that should be that way, will form the valley okay and that's going to stick all the way along and this piece is going to stick into that center piece and I'm going to line it right up with that join piece so it go right up to that and then you know you've got everything you know staying nice and straight and also if I fold that right over where it's folded it continues to give that real nice frame all around this white piece so that one's going to go like so and then you'll get another one which will do the same so you will have the mountain and then the valley and that one's going to go at the bottom okay and then these ones here you do the same you just flip it though so you've got your six inch it's going to go down and then your three like so okay and then again six inch and the three so it's exactly the same you're just flipping them around and they're all going to join like this now, before we stick them, you need to do your layers for these four. Otherwise, what I said about doing it before will go out the window because we didn't do these pieces. So you need, I'm trying to make sure I don't forget nothing. So it's just lots of mats and layers. It's, like I said, it's not difficult to do. So you've got two there, and then I'm gonna have those ones there, and then I've got these two for the back. So these are two and a half by five and a half, and you will want six pieces. Okay, so again, get those all stuck down. Okay, so now we can stick these down. So I've got two for the left, two for the right. All you wanna do is pop some glue down, roughly, obviously covering that one inch area, and then stick that right over the top. You wanna make sure you get it nice and flush right into the corner and keep it nice and straight along the top of the card there. That's probably the hardest thing about this card is just getting everything perfectly lined up. Okay, so that's that one there. And then I'm gonna stick this one along the bottom here. So again, just covering roughly one inch. If you wanna mark a pencil mark along there, so you know you're sticking your glue, 
in the right area you can I'm just going to spread some of that out okay and then each of these now I'm just going to pop glue actually onto this side and you can either lay it down flat but what I would say about that is you may not get it exactly where you want it to go so I'm just going to try it actually yeah it does if I lie it flat it, you want it to line up nice and flush with that join so if I bring mine up here's my join here where I overlapped the original you can see once it's flax that was bowing down then when I lifted it up so it pulled it out a little bit but it will and just again make sure the top runs nice and flush so again I'm just going to do that with this one okay and then we want to do the same with this one here so you will end up overlapping on top of that one again so this one here will have two over the top. So in the end, there's actually going to be one, two, three, four pieces of cardstock. So it's a really, really strong card. So again, I'm going to start from this side. And then again, stick down on here. And you want to make sure when you open it up, you want to get it up to that fold. So you might find it's easier to do this stick it up like that and then you can move it around quite easily. If I bring it up there you'll see mine is within this fold here. So make sure you fold this up when you stick that piece in place otherwise your card won't fold flat nicely. So this one here I'm just going to fold it out, put my glue on the back of this one and again keep that in a kind of a right angle position and then that will sit nicely over the top. So if you go over that score line when you do it when it's flat, it will just all buckle and it just, like I said, it won't lie nice and flat. So I'm just going to let that set for a minute before I fold it all up. That's that piece all done. Now we just need to cover everything else with our mats and layers. So these pieces here will cover, so you'll need three mats that are two and three quarters by three and three quarters. And they're going to go one in the middle. And it will sit perfectly within the where these pieces are. And you'll have that same border that you should have had with all the other pieces. That one's going to go there. And that one is going to go there. And then the mats to go on top, I've got that one there and then these two. And these are two and a half by three and a half and they're going to go on top. So I'm just going to stick all of those ones down. Okay, so that's those all done. So again, just every time, make sure everything goes nice and flat. Then it's down to these pieces. Now they're optional, you don't have to do them at all. As for any of these other ones, you know, you can decorate this, of course, any way you like, but you will need, so exactly the same way again. So these are three quarters of an inch by five and three quarters. And they're gonna go there, 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 and there. And then the longer ones, some of you probably already guessed it now. Five and a half by half. And they're going to go over there, 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 and there. Okay, so I'm going to go and get those now stuck down. Okay, so that's that stuck. And now you want to do these three here and these three here. So these are the mats. And these are two and three quarters by three quarters of an inch. So three there and three there. And it's, it's these that bring the whole card together and you can really appreciate all the kind of sections and stuff. And then again, you want six pieces that are two and a half by half and they're gonna go over the top. And all of these papers are all from that paper pack so everything matches together. So I'm gonna stick those down. Okay, so that's everything now stuck down. So it is bulky, but like I said, that's the style of it. So it's meant to be like that. But um, now it's down to the decoration. So I've already gone and created my little bunting there using, this is the bunting pack. So you get the 60 mini bunting and twine. You love these, you, I've used them loads. Then I've got my message for the center. And this one is gonna have with love. In fact, that one's a little bit crooked. So let's get that one there. And that's the eight sentiment toppers. Then I'm using the bird, which is here, the wooden bird. 
and those are just the six wooden toppers. Again, all these will be linked. You also get the Wellington boots, you can always use those ones. I haven't used many of them yet, so I need to. Then I'm using these paper flowers here, which are just the 12 paper flowers. Then I'm using the picket fence, but they're called the 10 wooden shapes, but there's only four of these left, so that's those now gone. And I'm gonna have two there and two there. Now these do add a lot of bulk to them. So again, do take that into account. Mine is much, much bulkier than probably yours will be but I love it, that's how I like to make my cards. So I'm gonna get a brad to go there. The leaves for this, from the 30 paper blossoms and leaves, so I'm just gonna take out three of those. And then the stickers that I have here and here are from the sticker set. So I'm gonna obviously use something different because you only get one of each. So I'm probably gonna add the Wellington boot instead of the watering can. And then there I will have this other bird one probably, so I'll pop them on in a moment. So I'm gonna pop this on high speed now. I've got my hot glue gun ready and um, yeah, get this all decorated and make it look really pretty. Okay, so there is my card decorated. So I've done that little puffy sticker there with the bird and the picket fence. The bunting's all stuck down. That's the center part, really like that. And then this side here, I've got the Wellington boot. And I also popped one of the puffy stickers. That's the fork. And there's some others there. I might add like the welcome to our garden. Could maybe go, maybe go here actually. So you might see them in the photos. I might play around the hello I'm not sure about that one but anyway there are obviously lots there that you can choose I've got some glue strings that I need to get rid of um but yeah there you have it absolutely gorgeous so just make sure like I said it does fold nice and flat the back's all ready to go and then now I'll show you the envelope okay so the measurements of this card it once it's all folded flat is six by nine now on the envelope punch board it goes up to six by eight and a half and it tells you you need a piece of eleven and a half by eleven and a half and score at four and seven eighths so I figured that surely if I used a piece of 12 by 12 and scored at five, because not any of these score line measurements use the very, very last one, which is five. So I done it and it worked. So here's a piece of 12 by 12. It's the paper from the pack. It's not cardstock. So that's the nice thing. I'm able to make really nice envelopes with this collection because it is a nice paper. So I'm just gonna take my stylus out here. So I'm aligning it right up with the five punch and score. Don't worry that you can't score all the way off, just go as far as you can. Rotate the whole thing round so you've got the opposite flat side. Pop it back in at five, punch and score. And then rotate it onto the next flat one and just bring it along until this corner meets up. This kind of piece here runs nice and flush with the score line. You will see it sticking out and then you can punch and score. Again, now I'm going to that last side that's not been punched yet and just slide it all the way along until that lines up with there. Punch and score. Okay, so don't worry that you haven't been able to score all the way off, say for example, on this one here and here, because now if you fold, you can see the score line doesn't go all the way to the end, but that's fine. If you fold along where it has scored, and then just carefully continue it there. Because it's paper, it should be fine. Fold those all round. Okay, and then like I did with, I can't remember what the other bulky card was that I'd done, but if you get the card itself and pop it in, and then stick the envelope down whilst the card's in the envelope, that way you know it's gonna fit. So I can bring this all up and you'll see it will go in. It's got plenty of room, it's just mine is bulky, so yeah, 
you probably won't have wooden pieces that you're using on them and those picket fences so if you imagine that comes off it will fit in much much easier but yeah so leave that in there actually I need to use this one because I've already done the envelope for that one so this is the one I've got to do and I'm just going to grab some of my red tape okay and I'm going to run I'll take that out for the minute so this is the bottom so the side pieces I'm just going to run red tape along that one and that one okay, take the backing off and then bring this over and you'll see there's plenty of room because there's a score line and there's a score I've got all that space so it's, it's got plenty of room I don't know why they don't put it on there as the final measurement because it clearly makes an envelope so it's the first time I've made an envelope this big with the punch board but I thought it's the size I need so I'm just wrapping it around try not to do it too tight I think that's what I done with the other ones I did kind of really pull it around just kind of let it kind of just bounce a bit and then bring up the bottom and wherever it falls just let it stick like so and then with the top one I'm just going to use some normal double sided Okay, and now your envelope is all ready to stick down when you need to, like so. So it does work, and that comes out much easier. So I think I, yeah, I think I done my other one a bit too tight. There we go. So now you have that real nice kind of dimensional envelope. So um, I do like doing them like this. Alternatively, you can make a box for it, but. Like I said, most of mine get hand-delivered, or if I do post it, I put it in like a jiffy bag and stuff anyway, so it's protected, but I love these. I think they are super cute and um, perfect for those real special birthdays. As I always say, when you've got like a centre part like this, you can have the, you know, special 21st birthday and 50th, 60th, 100th birthday. It's just great for those, but also for wedding cards, engagements, things like that. And also if you've got staff cards, staff cards? cards that you're making for a colleague and lots of the staff need to sign them you have so much space on the back for signatures so I know a couple of you do make a lot of cards for your work colleagues so yeah this is a perfect one for that so bring in the other envelope there and yeah there you have it guys so I hope you like them try and get them both in there there we go I've thoroughly enjoyed these ones anytime I use this collection it's just my favorite I'm just I get lost in a world and yeah have fun so I hope you've enjoyed it as I as much as I have I'm gonna go now because my words are all mumbled thank you for watching please give me a thumbs up if you did enjoy today and subscribe to my channel so you get to see more thanks for watching bye